our next guest. She is not afraid to speak her mind. Whitney Thor stars in the TLC series, My Big Fat Fabulous Life, and shows off not only her vivacious personality, but also her vulnerabilities. Watch this. We got Weave Emergency Girl. You know her from TLC's hit reality show, My Big Fat Fabulous Life. You don't have to understand it. I just don't want to deal with all this crap. What the f Whitney Thor is loud. <gasps> oh my God! Confident. I don't feel like I'm trying to cover myself up. And comfortable in her own skin. Take it, leave it, love it, whatever. Thor rose to fame with this viral video back in 2014, which she called a fat girl dancing. It features her dancing to Jason Derulo's song, Wiggle. While her rise to fame has been quick, so has the criticism. Viewers have shamed Thor for promoting what they call an unhealthy lifestyle. It's hard to know that somebody sees you and they don't see a human being. They just see something disgusting. Thor attributes some of her weight issues to her ongoing battle with PCOS, or polycystic ovary syndrome. PCOS consists of three things. Balding, bearding, and being fat. To be fat is one thing, and I've come to terms with that. And that self-assurance doesn't stop the 34-year-old from being her sassy self. <sighs> this camera gets the out of my face. She's ignored the negativity by embracing her body and her image, spreading her message of living without shame. Whitney's empowering TED Talk gained more than one million views. I said, Whitney, if there is something that you get asked to do and your only reason for declining is to say, because I'm fat, then you are gonna do that thing anyway. And she's carrying that momentum forward with a movement she calls No Body Shame, bringing people together of all shapes and sizes. Now Thor is back for a fourth season of her reality show, filled with even more drama. No, I'm okay, look, Charles. <laughs> and Whitney <laughs> joins me now, it's great to have you here. Thank you. you and I watch that TED talk and I feel like to steal a, a move from Saturday Night Live. I love it. I love it. I do. Thank you. I, you just make me feel like, yes, own it. Like you, you, I was so, I don't like the word fat and you are trying to change mm -hmm. that. Right. You don't like people to say it in a derogatory manner, but you're basically like, so fat is fat, thin right. is thin. It's all good. Yeah. I think it's a descriptor. And I think the longer that we attach shame and stigma to the word, the longer that it can hurt us. So um, I think a lot of us don't like the word fat because we want to deny it because we think that it's so bad and um, it morally makes us bad people. And I don't believe any of that. So I'm like, I'm short, I'm fat, I'm cute. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yes, amen. So you're not oblivious, obviously, to mm. what it's like to be an overweight person in America. No. And, you, and you talk about how for most of your life, your closest friend has been a thing called shame. Yeah. So just walk us through that so people don't think that you were just right. born into this world like, right. yeah, I'm fat and it's great. <laughs> no, I actually was very thin um, all the way up until I was about 18 when I went to college. I did struggle with eating disorders and body image issues, which I think every woman of any size can relate to. And then I suddenly gained 100 pounds my freshman year of college. Um, nobody knew what PCOS was. No one told me I had PCOS. I'd never heard of it. So my doctors just kept saying, well, you're in college or, you know, you're drinking now or, you know, and it was just really sloughed off. And I always say it was like a social experiment where I put on a fat suit overnight and then went out in public. And the differences in the way that people treated me, it was absolutely severe. Because this is the last accepted prejudice you, you said. Yes, this I, is the I last believe accepted. that. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay for society to mock or demean people mm -hmm. who are overweight. Mm -hmm. And I, I just got really got hit in the face with that. And you know, for years, for 10 years, I hated my body because I was fat. I continued to get bigger. Um, and of course, not all of that is directly due to PCOS, but for me, it was the shame of knowing that I was fat of people treating me like I was nothing because I was fat. And people like that who feel that shame, the last thing we want to do is try to be happy, try to go to the gym, try to take care of ourselves because being fat in this society teaches us that we're worthless. It's so, a constant assault. Yes. You get assaulted everywhere. You can't walk down the street. I've already been assaulted today, sister. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope not here. No. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's coming from a family of people who are overweight. Um, the last thing people who are fat need is for other people to tell them that they need to lose weight. Yeah. They're well aware of their body size yeah. and they don't need your judgment right. at all. Right. So we're back now.
back with more Body Talk and Whitney Thor, the star of TLC's My Big Fat Fabulous Life. So you you were open about the fact that you were incredibly depressed. You mm -hmm. felt terrible about yourself. You couldn't, you wanted to not go outside because of the way you were treated. Absolutely. Actual physical assaults that you were subjected mm -hmm. to because of your weight. Mm -hmm. So what was the aha moment that transformed you from that to the person who said this in your TED Talk? I am living a shame-free life in spite of a society that tells me I don't deserve to. Yeah. So basically for me, I hit rock bottom, which was making minimum wage, living with my parents. And I actually lost 100 pounds in eight months. Uh, and then like most people who lose a significant amount of weight, I gained it all back. And I just thought, what am I going to do now? You know, this is, this is the worst it's ever been. And my parents really encouraged me. Um, this makes me emotional. But they said, you know, something good is going to happen. Just keep trying to do your best. And I told myself, you know, I've hated my body when I was thin, when I was fat, it didn't matter, and it's never worked for me. So I'm gonna try this thing, like an experiment, where I'm just gonna decide to live as though I weren't fat, right? So maybe I'm gonna wear a bikini. Maybe I'm gonna go out in public. Maybe I'm gonna flirt with someone. I'm gonna pretend that I don't know that I'm fat and see what happens. And um, it's kind of a fairy tale. Literally, three months later, I had a TV show, so. Right, <laughs> right. So was it, did it all start with that video? Yeah. That video, so like, cause your dancing is unbelievable. You always took dance? Yes. Okay. Well, and of course, one of the first things that I quit doing was dancing as soon as I gained 10 pounds in college. Yeah. So I failed out of my dance class in college and I used to be a professional teacher. And you quit teacher. because you are aware of the image splashed in our faces every place in America, yes, which I, is, you must be thin to do anything. Right, and I couldn't look at myself, you know, in a room lined with mirrors. So when I decided that I didn't care about being fat anymore at the beginning of this experiment, the first thing that I did was call my best friend Todd, who I used to dance with, when I was a kid and I said, get over here, we're doing something. And, and what about when you put on the bathing suit, the bikini? Yeah. What, is, what does that feel like? What, you know, people are so funny. They always ask me about why I wear bikinis. And I'm like, girl, like the less wet lycra I can have on my body is, is better. Like, <laughs> it's not even like a statement. Like, I just can't get myself into a one piece. <laughs> if somebody has a sensible one piece, send it my way. <laughs> yeah, it just feels good. It feels free. But not only are you encouraging people with this show and your messaging who, who are, are overweight, you're right. encouraging anybody who has people who don't like their nose, people yeah. who don't, people who are gay, somebody came mm -hmm. out to you. Tell, tell us that story, I love yeah, that. Yeah, the, the most amazing thing is the range of people that um, I hear from on a daily basis. I am in no way um, trying to just get people to stay fat or be fat or, or anything. I don't, I don't care what your body is, and that's the point. Um, one of my favorite things was this uh, guy, I believe he lived in the Lebanon, and he, he called and he said, um, it's illegal to be gay here and I've just been watching you, and um, my life is really hard in Lebanon, and, and after seeing you, I feel like my life is going to be okay. And I remember just thinking, how on earth could he um, get that from watching me, like, at all? And, and you know, I'm, I'm, my story isn't of one of sexuality, it's of weight, and um, that's really been a common thread. And it's I, of owning it, of it, yeah, owning of, who you are. Mm -hmm. And it's but so how, amazing. How is that like, so you're saying, you're saying you got, you know, verbally assaulted even today, yeah. <laughs> and yet you get these loving messages from yeah. people like the guy in Lebanon. Yeah. So what is your message to others out there who are getting the hate and they're getting, you know, you right. can't go online. I know I can relate to that. <laughs> um, so how do you get through that? And how do you maintain your joy? Because right. you seem truly joyful. I am. And honestly, I'm very lucky that I have a really good support system. And I think that if you don't have one in real life, you got to seek it out. Um, and the other thing is that I do focus on the positive. It sounds silly and it sounds cliche, but I can read, you know, five negative comments and, and really it just, it sucks your energy out of you when you realize that people who don't know you just tell you to kill yourself just because you're fat. And then I turn around, I'm like, wait, 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 let me slide in my DMs. I slide in my own DMs. How pathetic am I? <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll go like, you know, in my messages and I'll just read just two or three at a time. And it's, it's a 16 year old saying, you've inspired me to love my body. It's a woman recovering from anorexia saying, I can beat an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. It's a 90 year old man saying, I just came out and I did it because of you. And then I'm like, wow. I'm like, good. This is contagious. And I tell you, my sister-in-law, Diane, who I love, she's my spiritual guru. She, she said this to me the other day and I recommend it to everybody in terms of whatever, if it's avoiding negativity on social media, however, whatever it is in your life. The question is, is this something I can completely ignore and go on living my beautiful life? <laughs> yes. That, like, honestly, the answer to almost everything is yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Love you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You've got to check out the show. There's all sorts of exciting things in it. New episodes.
Rose with my big fat fabulous life Tuesdays on TLC. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.